Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome, this is a review episode. So what are we gonna be doing? That's right, we're gonna be talking about all of these things which I wrote out because I knew I wouldn't be able to remember half of them if I didn't write them down. So this is what we've talked about in the last 20, 25, 27 videos or whatever it is. And we're not gonna go in a ton of detail of these but if there's anything on this list that's like, oh, really confusing or you have no idea what it is, then you might want to review some of the previous episodes. And that's with two exceptions, Fragments and Intense. We barely talked about Intense and we haven't even talked about Fragments yet. I'm gonna to get to that in this episode briefly. So, where it all began. If you guys remember back in the day, episode one, I just talked about the basics of app development and we brought up Android app development obviously. And then episode two, we talked a little bit about Java versus Kotlin versus all these other opportunities. And I decided to just talk about Java versus Kotlin in this episode. These are two programming languages and they can be used to do the same exact thing inside of Android development. So which you choose is ultimately up to you. Now, Kotlin's kind of newer. It's kind of like that fresh programming language on the block. And it, it's pretty well established. So it is popular. It's not like, it's not like you have to, to worry about jumping on, trying it out, and then it just disappears the next day. It's, I'd say it's more stable than the latest JavaScript framework. So you can try Kotlin as well, and I intend on doing Kotlin videos on this channel here too. So stay tuned for that and be sure to smack that sub button. We decided to go with Java since I already have a Java series. And once you know Java and you understand the Android principles, switching to Kotlin is gonna be a piece of cake. You just gotta learn some of the basics of the Kotlin language. From what I've seen, it ain't too complicated. And then picking up Android with Kotlin, that's gonna be easy. So that's that. Now, the thing with apps is that there's multiple points of entry and these points of entry, the, the different pages are known as activities. So we've been working with one activity and the next section we're gonna be talking about starting a new activity from another one. So we're on the main page. How do we open another page from that page? And you do that with something called an intent and we're gonna get into that. We briefly touched on that in an earlier episode, but I just wanted to bring, bring that word up so you had it registered in your uh, little brain there. Yeah, so that's that. Fragments, these are kind of like, uh, they're kind of like smaller activities and, and we're gonna probably get into these soon, but we're gonna start with just getting into activities. It's a more natural flow to understand activities and then move on into fragments. All right, so don't worry about that for now. Just if you are, I just wanted to put that in there if you are watching this and you're like, oh, why didn't you talk about fragments? That's because we're gonna get to them later, so yeah. Next up, we talked about layouts and also views. Layouts kind of uh, group views together so you can put views inside of these layouts. You can drag the layout around and all the views inside of them move. The views are like the text boxes and everything like that inside of the layouts. We've been using this one called a constraint layout, which basically you, you basically anchor different views inside of the layout. We haven't gone into the detail of how to do all of that, but we have anchored to the left and right and to the top. And that's just so if you don't do that, it's always going to jump up to the top left at position zero, zero. So when we get into design, we'll probably get into the, the constraint layout and how to work with it. But for now, just know that layouts are, are the, the container and the views go inside of it. So layouts is like a giant box and we're putting views inside of it. Now we can give an ID to these views so we can reference them in code. And we do this by saying find view by ID, pass in r.id dot whatever the, the ID that we assign it is. So for example, button or button 11 or whatever it might be. Now when we have a button, we can assign a click handler just in the attributes on the right hand side of the page, if that's where your attributes are. And this is defined in the XML, so you can do that as well. And it's really simple. You just put the method name and then inside of the .java file for this activity, you define that method and that becomes your event handler. And when you do that, you're going to have a, a parameter so that looks something like this. It's gonna be of type view and it's gonna have some names such as V it's the parameter and that is going to be assigned, it's going to be passed in the, the button that you click. So you can reference that button using V, so you can disable it, you can change the text, you can manipulate it in every single way you can manipulate a button. 
that is another way to grab views in addition to the find, find view by ID, passing in this stuff. So there's two different ways you can do it. The, the r.id.button, you can use that to grab any of the views. This one, you can only work with the, the, the one that the event happened on, such as the button that you clicked. Last, we talked about log.d. That's how we logged stuff to the console. And then we used our uh, toast to make little pop-ups. Now, in the previous episode, we talked about toast, but I didn't really explain that you need to make sure you have the imports. And the, that might apply for all of these things here uh, because I made it such that when there's an import that is not there, it'll automatically do it for me. We talked about how to do that inside of Android Studio. So if you don't got that, it's really easy. Just go to like, what was it? You go to like system, pre you go to like Android preferences and then you go to general and then, I don't know, look it up. You can figure it out or watch the entire 25 videos and find where that spot was. <laughs> so those were the main things. Now what I want to do is I just want to uh, go into uh, either going over some code examples of some of these things just to get some review, make sure you guys got it, maybe some exercises, or we'll just jump into the next section where we're gonna talk about creating new activities, doing some more complex stuff, how to pass data from activities. And hopefully all these things start to piece together so that when you're assigned a task of building the next crazy app, you have the tools in your tool belt to do that. Yeah, all these things just kind of seem like random information, like reference material, but it's kind of like, you're, I've explained this on my channel before, it's like learning the different Lego pieces. Imagine you're like a two year old and you, you see like the normal Lego piece and then the flat Lego piece and you're like, wow, this one can be used to make like houses and this one can be used to like eat. No, I'm just playing. But the different shapes, that's are, those are these and you can start piecing them together to make bigger projects. It's kind of hard to, to just jump in and make bigger projects without understanding these concepts. So I do apologize if it's taken such a tremendous length of time just to get through some very, very rudimental stuff but that's the approach I like to take because then I feel like you got that solid foundation and you guys can go do stuff on your own versus always having to be stuck in a tutorial purgatory or whatever you want to call it where you, you can't manage to create anything besides watching tutorials and following along. Use these tools to make something on your own, come up with some creative ideas like I showed you guys in an earlier episode. Me and my friend threw together a tic-tac-toe game. All we had to do was piece some of these basic things and we didn't even know what half these things were called at the time we just did it because it sounded cool and when something wasn't working we just tried something else we looked stuff up we got on stack overflow asked different questions and, and it kind of progressively got better you know at first we just had buttons and they didn't do anything when you clicked them and then we got them to to go disabled and then we got them to to say circle or x and it just got better and better from there. And then we got bored and we just went back to playing Call of Duty and went on with our lives. But you guys get the point. Um, try to do it in an exploratory manner. I'm gonna stop my rant about now. So thank you guys for watching. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. We can try to start a discussion. If you've learned anything that's been significantly helpful to you, please leave in the comments because that's going to help other people who go into the comments. So if you've had any bugs and you've managed to solve them, leave it in the comments and say what you did or what the issue was. If you had some clarity on some concept you were confused on and you finally figured out how to put it in your brain, put that in the comments because that's gonna help other people. So it should be this uh, community effort to help everybody learn. So thank you and let's move on to the next episode. Peace out.